China is seething at India. Indian External Affairs Minister Subramaniam Jaishankar's visit to Southeast Asia this week has left China furious and even worried. At the heart of the issue is the Philippines. You see, China has been very busy in the South China Sea, bullying the Philippines and ganging up on its Coast Guard vessels. Just take a look at what went down earlier this month. This is a Philippine Coast Guard vessel. Chinese Coast Guard ships carried out some dangerous maneuvers here, threatening to topple the boat. They surrounded it, used water cannons on it and collided with it at least twice. In fact, four Filipino crew members were injured in these confrontations. This could have gone sideways quite easily for both sides. So what is happening? This is a classic case of Chinese aggression in the high seas, which is rooted in Chinese expansionism. Obviously, India is no stranger to this. New Delhi is locked in a border standoff with Beijing in the Himalayas for the last four years. In fact, China's tendency to lay claim on land that never belonged to it sticks out like a sore thumb in its relations with nearly all its neighbors. For example, China has stepped up its ridiculous claim over the Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh, which it has decided to call Zangnan. It has also been giving its own names to places here in what India sees as absolutely ludicrous. The claims were ludicrous to begin with, they remain ludicrous today. So China's expansionist claims range far and wide. It is just that China does not expect pushback, not until India started a new trend. India is the only country of late that landed blows on Chinese soldiers in the Galwan Valley in eastern Ladakh in 2020. And now India is stepping up its game on the other side of China as well, in the South China Sea. In Manila, following his meetings with Filipino President Marcos Jr., Jashankar extended India's firm support to the Philippines against China's aggressive actions. He said that India firmly supports the Philippines for upholding its national sovereignty and called on China to adhere to a rules-based order highlighting the UNCLOS, an international law that China violates in the South China Sea every day. Taken aback by India's shifting position, China hit back, saying that the maritime dispute is between itself and the Philippines, third parties have no right to intervene, and India should face the facts and respect its territorial sovereignty and maritime interests. Hmm. But what are the facts? Just look at what the Indian Navy chief recently said at the Indo-Pacific Regional Dialogue in New Delhi. He raised, and I quote, the fragile security situation in the South China Sea with respect to the growing number of instances of bullying of smaller navies, including fishermen, by Chinese militia vessels. He also asserted clearly that this poses a clear and present danger to good order and discipline at sea. As highlighted by Jashankar's mention of the UNCLOS, the fact of the matter is that China is the aggressor here. The UNCLOS or the UNCLOS, which is the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, is basically a constitution of the seas under which China's claims on the South China Sea are defunct. Let me explain. Under the UNCLOS, countries have basic rules laid out about maritime controls in layers. The first layer, the territorial waters. This is an area up to 12 nautical miles from the baseline of the coast and it is where a country has absolute sovereignty and jurisdiction. This is as far as the country's national airspace also goes. Then there's the contiguous zone, which extends seaward up to 24 nautical miles from the baseline. No airspace rights, but customs and immigration laws apply here, so the country can control freedom of navigation and it also exclusively holds the rights over the sea's surface and floor. Then there is the exclusive economic zone, 200 nautical miles from the baseline. The country has no right to prohibit movement, but it has the rights to all the resources here. So be it fish stock or an oil find, it all belongs to the coastal state. So you see, in the South China Sea, Vietnam, the Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia and Taiwan are some of the major claimants, but they are locked in a raging dispute with China. 
because China has drawn up its own borders along the South China Sea. With its nine dash line, it claims more than 90% of the South China Sea as its own, and it is willing to occupy islands and even build artificial ones to justify its claim. The Philippines even took China to court at The Hague over this, and a UN backed tribunal ruled in favor of Manila, leaving Beijing red faced and in denial. Now, why is the South China Sea so important? Well, three things. First, it has large reserves of oil and natural gas. Some reports say that it holds an estimated 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas and 11 billion barrels of oil in proved and probable reserves alone. Second, it is heaven on earth for fishermen, feeding hundreds of millions of people every year. And third, to say that the South China Sea is an important trade route would be an understatement. More than 60% of global maritime trade passes through it, or one-third of all global shipping. This includes more than 30% of global maritime crude oil trade. So basically, whoever controls the South China Sea controls global trade. So now you see why China is so hell-bent on grabbing this entire sea for itself. But the stakes are even higher in China's case. To be truly ready to invade Taiwan, China needs the sea all to itself. It needs countries like the Philippines and Vietnam to cooperate and not invite foreign navies, especially the United States, into the fray. But the Philippines has been doing exactly this. Knowing that it cannot put up a fight against China alone, Manila has joined forces with the USA. It is already in a mutual defense agreement with Washington, which means that any attack on the Philippines will be defended against by the US. And this alliance is not just on paper. The Philippines has given the US Navy access to nine of its bases across the country under the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement or the EDCA signed in 2014. This includes three bases in the main island of Luzon. And get this, the northernmost base here is just 500 kilometers from Kaohsiung, Taiwan's third largest city. These bases would be crucial during a possible invasion of Taiwan, and USA's presence here has a direct bearing on Taiwan's security. Another base is on the Balabak Island down south, close to the disputed Mischief Reef, which is an atoll where China has built an artificial island with military facilities. So for China, this could mean a checkmate situation in the event of a war. But it is its own record of threats and aggression that have pushed the Philippines away, just like it did India. But China likes to tell itself that India is parroting the US, acting like the USA's pawn and not acting out of its own accord. This is obviously a coping tactic. India has significant stake in the South China Sea, with over 55% of its maritime trade passing through it. India also has territorial stake as not too far away from the South China Sea lie the strategically crucial Indian islands of Andaman and Nicobar. So India is entering the South China Sea and it very much means business. Indian naval warships have been docking in Manila. In December, it was the Indian Navy's INS Katmat which joined a military drill in the West Philippine Sea. Recently, an Indian Coast Guard vessel arrived in Manila as well. And this is not it. The two nations have a promising future in the realm of defense trade as well. India is all set to dispatch the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile to the Philippines. Manila is buying these missiles in a $375 million deal, which is the largest ever defense export deal for India. India is also in talks to sell the Tejas light combat aircraft to this nation and so it is very evident that defence ties between these two nations have entered a new stage, a new era that threatens Chinese designs. But with an array of aggressive claims on Indian land, Beijing should have expected no less. India has arrived on the other side of the Malacca and there is nothing that Beijing can do about it except dial down its expansionist agenda.